when our teachers are immersed in these ideas and you know critical pedagogy. It comes off the National Association of Teachers of Religious Education said that children should be taught the key concepts of white privilege in school. And when the overwhelming majority of Americans are sending their children to the government schools. This book is gay by Juno Dawson was found in a seventh grade classroom at Collinswood Middle School. It was also on the ELA recommended reading list for seventh graders at J.M. Robinson. I'm going to read from chapter nine, the ins and outs of gay sex, starting at page 201, part one, boy on boy sex. Perhaps the most important skill you will master as a gay or bi man is a timeless classic, the hand Then over time, this is how you get a generation that's immersed in these kind of presuppositions, right? Nobody's saying to them, you know, queer theory or critical theory, this mm -hmm, and the other, mm -hmm. but they're talking about these ideas. We have been rocking our twos class. We've been talking about gender and skin color and consent and empathy and our bodies and autonomy. It's been fabulous. They're talking about these ideas of, you know, the, the oppressor, oppressed paradigm. When you talk about critical race theory, which is pretty much gonna be teaching kids how to hate each other, how to dislike each other that's pretty much what it's gonna, that's pretty much all can say it's pretty much what it's going to all come down to you're going to deliberately teach kids this white kid right here got it better than you because he white you're going to purposely tell a white kid oh the black people are all down and suppressed how do i have two medical degrees if i'm sitting here oppressed um as an, an explanation for the the way and the reason that things are the way they are there's something very disturbing happening in schools all over the nation today. Students in schools are not just being taught reading, writing, and arithmetic, but also an entire agenda and ideology. They're being taught numerous unbiblical ideas concerning race and sexuality. If your parents don't love and accept you for who you are this Christmas, now, I'm your parents now. I'm proud of you. Drink some water. I love you. Bye. Many school officials and people in the mainstream media object and say these kinds of things are actually not being taught to children. This is a manufactured crisis. This is not real. This is a national playbook by some very smart, organized people who pay people to go out and create havoc. There definitely is something that is critical race theory. It's not taught in schools. Um, and I think that's that was the narrative that was yeah. crafted really last summer. And then it took... It caught on like wildfire. I've never yeah. seen anything like it. I don't think you need to inject truth serum into legislators. I think you just need to have a conversation with them individually behind closed doors, and they understand that this is a manufactured crisis. However, as Vody said earlier, although teachers may not be using terms like critical race theory or queer theory, it's clear that many teachers in schools are directly teaching students all of these ideas. They're talking about history through a particular lens and they're shading history in particular ways they're talking about sexuality they're you know making decisions um, you know on on the, the broader level in school systems about how they're going to teach in areas of sexuality and also um, how they're going to conduct themselves like what are you going to do about um, bathrooms and what are you going to do about you know kids coming out and you know how are you going to handle um, these sort of gender identity things um, you know all of those things are have been going on within the educational system and when I say the educational system I mean first the way we train teachers and then secondly the way that they execute that training within our schools that's been going on for generations now and mm -hmm. it's been preparing the ground going to be running a race. <laughs> However, your starting position in this race will be decided by the answers to questions 
that we are going to be asking you. Sorry, what? <laughs> it's a joke. This activity is intended to explore how society favours one race over others. And because these unbiblical ideologies are being taught to so many children in the school system, it's no wonder that we are seeing an unprecedented number of young people leave the church, support unbiblical policies regarding homosexuality and abortion, and vote for these unbiblical policies. And when the most popular pastors in America compromise or stay silent regarding these controversial issues, there is little to stop the school system from successfully indoctrinating millions of children. Stephen Furtick, one of the most popular megachurch pastors in the country today, fully endorsed his son's album that glorifies guns, shooting, sex, and exorbitant wealth. It seems that Furtick is unconcerned about his son being completely immersed in worldliness. T.D. Jakes, another one of the most popular megachurch pastors in the country today, contributes to the racial divide by promoting the idea of the need for equity, not equality. When we have had hundreds of years of being inbred, sold, babies snatched out our arms, prodded on slave tables, abused for hundreds of years, and then say, we gave you some welfare checks, and we gave you affirmative action, and you should be good. It's like molesting a child from three to 18, and then giving them $100,000 and say, you should be fine. But they're still holding on to the ide ideology that lay at the foundation of that movement. So they still believe fundamentally um, that our goal ought to be equity and not equality, right? Mm -hmm. They still want the diversity, equity, inclusion, you know, right. uh, program. And, 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 and just in case there's anyone new here, can you just tell yeah, us the difference yeah. between equity and equality? So again, equality is that age old idea that everybody is equal and ought to be treated equally and that everybody ought to um, play by the same rules and have the same opportunities, right? Um, equity is the idea that everybody ought to end up at the same place yeah. and that if they're not ending up at the same place, and when I say everybody, I, I don't mean individually, right? We, 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 have to, we have to racialize everyone and we have to see everyone as, as groups and not as individuals. And so groups need to have the same outcomes. And if groups are not having the same outcomes, then the, the assumption is that that's because of racism in the system, mm -hmm. right? In other videos, we've discussed how countless other megachurch pastors, such as Joel Osteen, Chad Veach, and Rich Wilkerson Jr., work very hard to avoid addressing controversial cultural issues. Well, you know, I think I have an important voice, but I'm very, I think I've been good. I think part of my, if you want to call it success, is I've stayed in my lane, and my lane is lifting people's spirits, and there, there are issues that good Bible-believing people see on both sides of the fence. When the most popular megachurch pastors in the country choose to never confront unbiblical ideologies concerning race and sexuality that are being taught to children in schools all around the country, it shouldn't surprise us that these schools now essentially have a monopoly upon the minds of these children. We are living during dark times, and it can be easy to lose hope when it seems that every elite institution in the country stands firmly against Christians and the Bible, and the most visible pastors within Christianity refuse to confront the evils of the culture. So, what should we as Christians and Christian parents do in the midst of such opposition? Well, we have a duty to educate both ourselves and our children according to the Word of God, and to do everything in our power to prevent our children from being indoctrinated by the propaganda of the world. I have a lot of conversations with moms who have their kids, the Christian moms, Christian conservative moms, they have their kids um, in public school. Now, I've also gotten to a lot of respectful, but I'd probably call them arguments, respectful arguments with women about this because I don't believe that if you can help it that you should have your kids in public education system. Um, 
And over the past couple of years, I have seen a lot of parents who previously thought it was okay, who previously thought, not my district. We live in Alabama. We live in Georgia. We live in Texas. It's not going to happen here. And I'm equipping my kids. They're going to be light in the darkness. And we've got good Christian teachers. Yeah. Oh, they go to our church. They're in our Sunday school. And a lot of those, to their credit, a lot of those moms have actually come back to me and said, you know, I changed my mind. Or it's very often been, you know, what Vody Bauckham said about not being able to send our kids to Caesar without them coming back Romans. That really resonated with me. I hear that a lot. There's a popular argument that if Christians take their kids out of the schools, then there won't be any Christians to evangelize to the non-Christians in the schools. However, we need to recognize that our children need to be trained first before they are ready to evangelize to others. And it's almost impossible to train our children if they are not only away from us for most of the day, but also being trained against us by the very schools we are sending them to. Our missionaries need to be trained, right? And you don't send your missionaries to be trained by your adversary. Mm. You don't send your missionaries to be trained and indoctrinated by the people that you want them to share the gospel with. Mm. You train them first and then you send them into that territory. Mm. So we're doing it completely backwards. Our kids are not the missionaries, they're the mission field. Mm, That's a really good point. That's a really good point. And I, I also think about the fact that it's not just what kids are learning, or it's not just what they may not be learning. So even if your child is in a school where gender ideology hasn't fully hit mm-hmm, yet or mm-hmm. critical race theory hasn't fully hit. Although I would say that's kind of hard to believe at this point that right. it's not somewhere in there, even if the parents don't realize it's it. in the curriculum. Right. Yeah. Right. And even as you said, it's subtle. They're not saying yeah. today we're learning critical race right. theory. It's today we're learning the real history of the United States right. or something like that. Um, but it's also, I think, what they are missing when they don't have a Christian education. As Christians, there is only so much that we can do to change a culture that has largely raised its fist against God. However, God has given us the responsibility and duty to do everything we can to protect our children and to train them to withstand the anti-Christian ideologies that are all around them. If we have the ability and means to teach and train our children yet, we hand over this important responsibility to schools and teachers who will give them an anti-Christian education, then we are guilty of failing our children in the most important way. So for the Christian parent, what we're saying is, I'm not only willing to compromise theologically my kid's education, right? By the way, kindergarten through 12th grade, a child spends 14,000 instructional hours in school. Mm. Okay. So I'm, I'm number one, I'm willing to compromise theologically and teach my children by default that Christ is not Lord over academics. Number two, I'm willing to compromise academically because the American school system ranks middle of the pack and below in math and science, for example. So, you know, we're not only doing harm from a biblical, theological, um, Christian worldview perspective, but we're also doing, doing harm from just a basic academic perspective as well. Getting a biblical Christian education, both for ourselves and for our children, is the most important responsibility we have. Because without the Bible, there is no truth or hope. So Christians, let's refuse to hand over our children to godless schools, teachers, and ideologies, and fulfill our God-given responsibility to raise and train our children to do battle with us against the evils of this world. Thank you so much for watching until the end. If you'd like this video, hitting the subscribe button helps this channel reach more people with the truth. Thank you so much for your support and encouragement.